Hi everyone, I'm Carrie Warnick with Multi-Region Purchasing Co-op and I'm going to spend hopefully about the next 15 minutes just walking you through the process of how to manage our Labatt Bid Award catalog. It is very large and there's a lot of details on all the products in the catalog. And I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to downsize that catalog to the order guide for your menu only. And this will make it very easy for you to share with your ordering team if you have one and stay on track ordering the right products that are bid products and not getting off track ordering off bid products throughout the school year. So let me share my screen and show you a very quick and easy way to do that. And then I'm also going to show you how to quickly update a new version of the catalog. We are still going through updates. Things are constantly changing still. Some of the Labatt codes that are still pending are getting filled in. We're still hearing from, you know, um, our processors and manufacturers about price increases and production issues. And we will continue to update the catalog and make you aware of where we're seeing problems with products. So it's important that you constantly are downloading a new version when you're notified, which we're going to start getting those notifications when I update uh, the catalog and making sure that you've got a most current version that you're working from. Okay, let's get started. Let me share my screen. Okay, so what you are looking at is the Labatt Bid Award catalog. And just a couple of quick notes about this catalog. You've got column A, which is titled My Products. And we're gonna talk about that in a minute. Column D, gives you what's called an availability color code. And that is explained up here in the legend. Green mean go, yellow means there might be some disruptions. Red means it's just been discontinued altogether, don't plan on it. If you see an exclamation mark within the cell, that means there has been a pricing change. Could be a decrease, could be an increase. Recently, we saw Tyson decrease some prices. It wasn't because they just wanted to lower the price. They actually changed the pack size, which changed the donated food value, which obviously decreased the price. So need to pay attention to everything going on. And we're going to tell you in the notes column, and there is a notes column, of what changed. And so you're totally informed. Also, up at the top, you have an updated on date. This tells you the last time this catalog was updated in some form or fashion. It could be something simple as filling in a Labatt code, but it was updated. So you want to always make sure you're working from a current version. I will tell you if products are discontinued and we don't have a comparable replacement for it, I will work on getting a comparable, comparable replacement added to the catalog. I won't add a product in the middle of the rows. It gets added to the end. And that's super important when I'm about to show you how to manage this very large catalog and get it in control. There is a column C titled numerical order code. And this is a one through 46, 4700 number. That number will never change. Labatt codes can change on occasion. Um, but not often. Manufacturer codes typically don't change, but there are some that are duplicates, meaning company A has the same number as a company B. So that can be a little frustrating when you're looking for a manufacturer product code. Um, <clears throat> row numbers can change because if I sort this, if I sort this, uh, for example, I see there's a PPI product on column 18, but if I put the manufacturer uh, column in alphabetical order, well, guess what? Now row 18 has a different product. So when you guys reach out to me, you can't tell me it's on row whatever in the spreadsheet because I have no idea how you've got this thing sorted or even filter. You know, I could filter this down to only seeing companies and I'm, I'm just clicking on the down arrow here and maybe I only wanna see the products made by Albies. I select Albies and now I'm only looking at the two products offered on bid. If a column, any one of these columns is in a filtered state, you're going to see a little funnel instead of the down arrow. Now, notice that when I hover over that, I see manufacturer product codes showing all. But when I hover over the funnel, 
it shows me that the manufacturer brand label only equals Albies. All I have to do is click on that, click on select all, click OK, and everything comes back. I do encourage you uh, to, you know, um, not delete rows and columns. Just if you need to hide things because it's too much to look at, you can simply do that. But don't delete anything. And I'm going to tell you why it's going to get more important here in a minute. I'm going to really encourage you to use column A to help manage this Excel spreadsheet. It's going to make your life a whole lot easier. Now, I can hide any piece of information in here. If I want to hide column B, I simply highlight it. I right click and I click on hide. I can bring it back at any time. I can do that to any one of these columns. Maybe I don't care about the unit of measure. I can hide that. That's hidden. I could downsize this thing in so many different ways or hide and unhide. To bring everything back, I either highlight the three rows around the or the two rows around the hidden one, right click and select unhide, or I click in the very top left-hand corner, you see the little uh, triangle, click that, it selects the entire spreadsheet, hover over any column, click unhide, and now that column L that I hit a while ago, the unit of measure is back and anything else that might be hidden is back. All right. Now, what am I talking about when I talk about the My Products column? This is where you go through the spreadsheet, and let me get this back in this smallest to largest numerical order. This is where you go through the spreadsheet and you place an X or a Y or the word yes, or week one, week two, however you wanna flag a product that you need to order for your menu or for your district needs, for your child nutrition needs. That can include non-food items. You're going to run through and you're going to find the products you want to order on bid and you're just going to place an X. Literally, it is this simple. Now, keep in mind, this catalog, I downloaded it from the Google Drive and saved it to my computer. And I'm going to encourage you when you download the current versions is to title it by the date. So, I mean, I'm not showing that right now, but you would maybe title this one as Labatt Catalog August 18th. So you always know which version of catalog you have and is it the most current version. As I start to update this, I'm going to start sending out notifications. So kind of a heads up on that. Um, it is still going through lots of updates and that's pretty typical during this time of the school year. So do your due diligence. Go through and place next or some kind of a notation on the products you plan to order. Once you do that, there are two things you can do to make the list shorter without losing anything in the list. One, you can click on that down arrow in my products and you can sort A to Z. It's gonna pull everything up that you have flagged with an X, a Y, a yes, or whatever your, your uh, tagging system is. I've even seen some schools use like W1 for week one, W2 for week two get creative, make it work for you. This is, you know, something you've got to, you've got to be in, uh, you know, weekly. So now I'm only seeing, you know, I mean, I'm not only seeing, but I am seeing all the products below, but I'm, I'm seeing my products at the top or if you click on the down arrow after you've sorted A to Z and then you uncheck blanks and click. Okay. Now you've got this lovely short list of an order guide. These are the products I want to order. Now I'm sure you're going to have 400 to maybe a thousand products um, that that fulfill your needs on a, a cycle menu and a weekly, monthly basis. But it's a whole lot easier than looking at 4,700. So utilize this column. The cool thing is you don't ever have to do this more than once. You do it one time. And then when the updated catalog comes along, I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to update that catalog with a copy and paste function of one column. And that's where this column C becomes very important. So let's say this is your current catalog. It's, it's from July. You know there's a current version out there of August 18th. You just got a notification from Carrie. And now you need to replace your old catalog with the new version because it's got updated information. There could be all kinds of new availability information. There may be uh, some, some Labatt codes that have been pending that are now filled in. So you want the updated version. So you're going to open up your old catalog. First step is you're going to make sure nothing is filtered. 
So you want to make sure all your columns are showing with a little down arrow and check all of them. We really try hard to load the catalog in an unfiltered um, state, but just double check. Next, you want to make sure that your column C is sorted smallest to largest. And remember, don't delete anything out of your catalogs because that, that will mess you up. Make sure this is sorted one through 4,700. Now, this one's in good shape now. This is your old catalog. You've been to the Google site. You have downloaded um, the new version. And I'm going to encourage you to save it as that date. So here I've downloaded the new version, Labatt Award Catalog, August 18th. Let me take this out. I was playing a while ago. Um, so it's not going to have any X's in it. This is a brand new catalog you just downloaded. You're going to save it as the, the current date. And then you're going to make sure, again, column C is sorted smallest to largest. You don't have anything that's filtered going across the page. You're looking to make sure all the columns are completely open and showing all products. Now you're ready to import, copy and paste, your My Column. I mean, your My Products column. Good grief. Can't speak this morning. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to the old catalog. It's sorted one through 4,700. You're gonna highlight column A. Two ways you can copy. You can right click and select copy. It's gonna put that green and white rotating line around it, or you can hold down the control button and hit C, and that also copies it. So whatever works for you, whatever is the fastest and easiest and that you can remember. Now you've got this thing copied. Now you're gonna pick up your August 18th catalog. You're going to highlight column A. You're going to right click and paste as a value. And look what happened. The minute I copied, nothing changed with exception. Now here are all my flagged products. I can now sort this A to Z and there are all my X products. I didn't lose anything, but now I've got an updated version of the catalog. Very important that you use the numerical order code column, get that sorted one through 4,700 in both versions. Nothing is hidden. Nothing is in a filtered state. Copy A, paste it, go on about your business. Don't forget to save it, obviously. And that's how you don't lose what you, all the hard work you've done over here. Now, if you're uh, a district that uses uh, process commodities, um, you might have to do that to your commodity products only tab. I have, you know, created a, a commodity only tab to make it easier for those that have banked pounds. And you're going to do the same thing. You're going to go to the column C. You're going to sort smallest to largest. Please keep in mind that it's not going to be one because these were pulled from the main tab. And so they're, they're not going to be numbered. They match. If I were to go look for numerical order code 139 on the main tab, this exact product is going to show up. Just make sure you sort it from smallest to largest, but it's going to look a little different. And then if you've come in here and extra products, you're going to do the same thing. Off your old copy, you're going to copy column A from the commodity products only tab, and you're going to paste it into the new version. No different. Now, right now you're seeing some notes in the availability color code. Um, that was an error, and we're about to correct that. Um, we do have a notes column, and when you see over here, um, column Y tells you what's going on with that product. So I'm in the process of transferring some notes that accidentally were placed in this column over to this column. Um, if there is a, a replacement that's recommended, you'll see it mentioned over here, and we're going to refer you to a product code, not a Labatt code. Now, something new, I'm going to get on the main tab here, something new you're seeing and the updated version is the G10 number, the G10 code. So what that stands for is Global Trade Identification Number. So when you think about uh, a UPC, which is the barcode, when that UPC is red, it picks up the G10. So why do you see this in there? Well, I've been trying for years to uh, have the G10s for every single product because it is a unique identifier number, whereas product codes can have duplicates where we've got several companies, different companies, such as like MCI has a product code, but 
the same product code exists with a different manufacturer because these are, are chosen by the company. This is assigned and there is never a duplicate. So it is truly a unique identifying number for each of these products. Why is this important? Well, it makes it easy for me when I'm using more advanced functions in Excel to find products and match up products. But more importantly, multi-region co-op is about to roll out a service offered to those of you purchasing through Labatt uh, of a database and a cross-platform software that will work with your POS system to help you with your menus, your administrative reviews, and searching for products when we have a new bid or renewal going out as well as helping me write better specifications and bids. It is an amazing program that multi-region gets to offer to uh, the districts using our Labatt catalog. So very exciting. You're gonna stay tuned for that. It's coming very soon, uh, but you're gonna see this column start to fill up with the appropriate G10s for each product. So there you have it, how to manage this catalog, get it downsized to where you're only dealing with the products you're gonna order. Filter it, get rid of the blanks. Now you're only seeing this really awesome short order guide. I will tell you in Labatt system, if they have to sub an off bid item, that goes in the system for historical purchases. And if you're ordering off of history, you could accidentally start ordering an off bid item. So don't get caught doing that. Use an order guide that's your reference guide. Have your team trained to always refer to the order guide when they place their weekly order so that you don't get caught making a mistake of accidentally ordering an off-bid item all year long. I've seen it happen over and over. Creating this shorter order guide is gonna help you avoid that. All right, there's the training. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this helps you uh, get control of the 47 hundred item list we've got for the Labatt Bid Award catalog. If you need help or have any questions, please reach out to me. I can absolutely help you get started and uh, hopefully this helps you. All right. Have a great day. Thanks.